Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji here with my good buddy, Sean Cole. And today we have a few products actually from the ARC team based in Italy. And we have them sitting here right behind us. And we have the carbon sequential shifter along with the race brake, or we've called them e-brake or emergency <laughs> brakes here in the States. They go by handbrake or race brake. I'm glad you covered that, by the way, because I think we got hammered in the past for calling it uh, e-brake. E yeah. yeah. Anyway, but you might remember Team ARC or ARC Team from a while back. I did one of the most crazy modifications to a G27. I thought I was going to blow it up. It was so... We had the fire extinguisher out. We did, and it was needed because you never know what I might do on one of those kind of projects. Yep. Anyway, they also had that really cool brake mod for the G27 pedals, so we did review that a while back. and. We kind of have a reputation with their stuff already. Yeah, so again, they're based in Italy and they're known for those mods and also for some other high-end sim racing products or gear. So we're here to, uh, or Sean actually put them through their paces. As you can see, they are mounted to Sean's rig. We only got one set, so not that we were asking for a second set, but. Mounting though, I mean, these required major mounting. Hardcore mounting because that shifter alone, well, right now you still have it mounted and it's almost attached to your monitors and your monitors are... are... No, I cured it in a wave two. Okay, because I saw a little movement still. <laughs> that shifter's beef, man. It's, it, it is. It's, it's solid. It's not just unbolt it and hand it to you and have you use it at your place. No, definitely not. Now I wanted the ultra heavy duty mounting, but it did come with a clamp on type that I didn't test because I wanted that thing stiff like I wanted it, so. Might yep. as well mount it heavy duty. Don't blame you. And that's why you didn't get it back or didn't get it at all. Matter of fact, that's why it's not sitting on this table because <laughs> it needed to stay on the rig. So speaking of the shifter, let's start with that. And again, it's the ARC carbon sequential shifter and the USB version, which is plug and play, goes for 180 euro or about $235. Shipping is not included. Like most sequential shifters, the design is very simple. It all fits in an aluminum box that only measures about seven inches long. This version is in raw aluminum with a black lever sticking out. And the tension for the shift lever can be adjusted on the side of the box with a little knob, which is Probably the most adjustable sequential shifter that we've tried. Well, and it's measurable. It's got numbers so you can know where you were in the past and kind of figure out what you want, which makes it easier to tune than other ones I've tested. The shifter comes with a lever extension and a stock plastic knob. You can also order Sparco Pro knobs for an additional fee. On the bottom of the shifter, there are four threaded holes for pretty easy installation, or there's a clamp style mount that costs 30 bucks. So that doesn't come included? No, it's an additional mount. For $30? Yes. And if you wanted a, a real shifter knob, I mean, honestly, I'd want a Sparco or something that resembled a real car one. They give you kind of that faux plastic one and it kind of, I mean, but honestly at that price, I'd want that upper level. Well, that's also extra though, but I would imagine you could buy a, a Sparco. You could do that on your own later. Right. Yeah. You can also order the shifter in all black for an additional $8. We're testing the USB version, but it also comes without the board for $184, but you're gonna need to plug it into your own board, like a Leo board or any other type of board that will control. So that's if button. you're like the full DIYer. Yes, exactly. And now that leads us to the handbrake, which is actually not standalone USB. It is plugged into the shifter. Right, since we got the USB version of the shifter, it has room for extra pieces, i.e. the Handbrake, which plugged in, so we didn't, but if we only did the handbrake, we'd need the USB version or we'd need our own board. Got it. So this non-USB version goes for 157.29 euro or $206 here in the US. If you want it as a USB standalone, it goes for 193 euro or $254. Our version is the aluminum color, but is also available, like Sean mentioned, in the black anodized for an extra eight bucks. Yeah, exactly. The construction is really solid and very cool in looks. It uses aluminum plates and stainless steel screws. It then has a 10 kilogram gas spring for resistance measured through a magnetic hall sensor. When we got this, I remember you and I were looking for the sensor. It took us a little while to we're like, find. Is this a potentiometer? <laughs> How is this thing operating? You know, I'm gonna pull it while we're sitting here. We were talking about that. This is one of the coolest this is, this is the coolest handbrake. It's not a button click. No. You know, where you're clicking on the button to get the e-brake. This is a progressive axis. Yes. You know, progressive, but it's an axis that's measuring the distance of that brake, and it feels similar to a handbrake. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, well, more importantly, in the games that actually acknowledge 
a handbrake that will be a variable of some sort. Right. And then it really comes into, into play. The brake arm can then be attached to the base either horizontally or vertically and ends up being quite significant. I mean, this is a very long, it's like 20 inches long by the time you're all said and done. So if you had a tight cockpit, maybe you'd have to cut the bar, I guess. But that's the way the drift guys and the, the rally guys do it. They have that e-brake. Yep. Pow what hand brake, race brake, <laughs> whatever you call it. Rear brake, how about that? There you go. Uh, they have it right here, man. Mm -hmm. They're yanking on that right there, yeah. so. And that's exactly how I mounted on my rig, so it worked out perfectly. You're gonna need something very heavy duty, but installation is pretty simple. It has six slotted holes on the bottom that can be easily mounted or screwed to just about anything. Yeah, it's pretty simple if you know how to drill a hole and put a screw through it. Yep. So that's pretty good, much gonna do it for the details on the ARC shifter handbrake combo. And we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna go over the pros, cons, final thoughts, and we will put it on the rev scale. Two rev scales. Two rev scales right after this. Inside Sim Racing is sponsored by Butt Kicker. Take your gaming to a new level of realism, immersion, and dynamics with Butt Kicker tactile transducers. Get 10% off of these packages by using coupon code ISR10 at thebuttkicker.com. Welcome back to our review of the ARC Team Sequential Handbrake, well, Sequential Shifter and Handbrake Combo. And now we're going to get right back to the pros and cons. We'll go through these kind of quickly and then move on to our final thoughts on a score. Uh, first thing, so on our pro side, we got a long list, and that starts off with something that's really important. This is professional grade sim equipment. This is not plastic stuff. This is heavy duty stuff and it's very nice. Next is the variable handbrake. It's awesome for drifting and for rally driving and that's its intention. We're gonna go back and forth with these. So we're gonna mention something about the shifter, a little bit about the handbrake. So next thing about the shifter, adjustable tension, which is really easy to adjust. Uh, and then the next very positive click on the shifter and a real, very realistic feel. Mm -hmm. Next up is the plug and play or the DIY version of the handbrake or the shifter. And that's great for the DIY guy. And real important to note, this is for the PC only. Now I wonder if Basher, John Gage at Basher Boards could create, I think he, John, this guy John Gage creates these different boards and converters. I bet you money he could convert this to work on the console. I, I'm certain he could. Through a Fanatic or a Thrustmaster wheel or something like that. I yeah. Know. So there's a possibility to have it work on a console. Absolutely. Next pro is they are very solid to the point that, I mean, I would recommend extreme heavy duty mounting for this gear. Yep. Next looks, looks, both look. Actually, the, the handbrake's a little raw mm -hmm. looking. The shifter looks awesome. Yeah. Very cool looking shifter. Uh, and the brake, you can, another pro, you can set it up vertically or horizontally. So mm -hmm. you can go either way, you know, as far as however way you wanna set your rally or drift experience up. Absolutely. And the next pro is something that, uh, especially for the drifter or the rally driver, and it's the added realism. I mean, when you, any video you look at the drifting or the rally guys, they're using sequential shifters and a very long handbrake. Yep. And this, this gets that gear right where you want it, just like a real rally guy. Yep, I agree. That's gonna take us to the cons, and there weren't many, because again, this is solid, very well done. ARC makes some very high quality stuff. Yeah, and very, very extensively tested as well. Yep. So. First up, very expensive. Now, and, and then it goes to the next con, it's only made for a couple of games. or You really can only use it for a couple of titles. Richard Burns Rally, 
dirt three and four, any title that you can drift really if you're a drift guy. Right. Which, you know, live for speed, those guys do a lot of drifting in there. R Factor, there's a lot of drifting there. So you could use it for any one of those titles, but it's it's really specific to that type of driving or racing. Yeah. Drifting or rally only. Yeah. You're not gonna use the, sh well, that's for the handbrake. Right, exactly. The sequential shifter, <laughs> that is not a con because you can use that sequential shifter with anything. Yeah. And it's very commonly used um, for shifting, you mm -hmm. know, except for maybe a NASCAR, but everything else is, you know, a lot of those guys use hand sequential shifters. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, expensive. And then on the brake side, not very many uses for it outside of drifting or rally. And it's gonna need the compatibility from the game as well. Yep. And then another con would be uh, looking to the brake is that bare Nissa that you mentioned it, even yeah. in the pros. A little raw. But there wasn't even a handle on top. So, yeah. I mean, I thought about maybe wrapping some leather or putting some kind of like BMX grip. Pipe grip, we were talking yeah. about pipe grip. Yeah, I ended up leaving it bare, but I figured at that kind of money, I'd expect a little more. Yeah. And the next con, this really isn't a con, but it's more food for thought. Is it really necessary? I mean, that gets back to what you were talking about. If you're a rally guy or a drifter, sure. I mean, if that's your, all you're setting your rig up for, or you really are into that as a sec, whatever. I mean, it's your choice, your rig to do whatever you want with, but it's definitely specific. Yeah. So that's gonna take us to rev scale. And I'm gonna tell them what your original rev scale score was, and then I'm gonna <laughs> tell them how we discussed it. Sean originally scored this as a seven and a half. And, be and mainly because of, you were only able to use it with drifting or rally. But then I mentioned, I said, well, let's rate it based on the quality of gear that it is and what its intended use is for. Yeah. That being said, we, okay, looking at the shifter, I got to give the shifter a nine, just regardless of who you are and what your your sim racing is. This is this is my favorite sequential shifter. And by the way, we've had now two other high quality sequential shifters in here to, to review. That are both very good. Awesome shifters, the, the Derek Spear bent knob and the, uh, Frex, Frex GT shifter. Both awesome shifters, but man, this one, this one's like a notch above. And I don't even remember what we rated those. We probably gave those about a nine, but it's, are they, you know, are you getting what they're made for out of it? And that's the thing. I mean, this one is very expensive. We mentioned it, but I mean that it's the nicest looking of the three. And that's where the point comes off. It's the from best. The 10. Yeah. And it, but it's the best feeling of the three. Yep. The way you can adjust the tension. I mean, anyway, so kind of getting off track there. Uh, looking at the handbrake, really I come back to the same thing. I mean, my, my cons on it are just aesthetics and price, but functionally it's amazing and it is so much fun. So if you're gonna go do some drifting, it, it takes a little while to get used to. I mean, that is a learning a new art if you haven't done it before. If you're a seasoned rally or drifter, you're gonna be, you can't wait because you've probably been flicking your button a thousand times trying to get the same sensation of half or even break a, or quarter break. Or a sequential break. shifter to yeah. get that same sensation yeah. or feeling. Yeah. So I think we're, we're pretty much in final thoughts. Yeah, I kind of gave all my final thoughts there. I mean, this is the bottom line. If you're just a sim racer and you're just doing some oval stuff or doing some Formula One stuff, both of these products probably seem absurd and just out priced out of this world to you. However, if you've been playing Dirt 3 for a lifetime or Richard Burns Rally, or like you mentioned, Live for Speed or R Factor, some of the other games that really do emphasize drifting and rally racing, this is a tool that we've needed forever. I mean, yep. how many times have you wanted to make your own handbrake just to be able to do it for the times that we do do some dirt road racing? It's key. If you want to be fast and, and especially rally, yeah, it, man, that handbrake is so key to get around some, you know, a lot of the hairpins and stuff like that. And you know, some people say Dirt Three is is very gamey, and it is. But yeah. I'll tell you what, get all the gear set up and you know, treat it like a sim, and it'll reward you like a sim. And as gamey part. as it is, it recognizes a variable handbrake. So, I mean, it's it's looking out for the drifter and the rally guy properly in that respect. Yep. So, I mean, and then the other last thing I'd really say is I've used a lot of stuff from ARC now, and I like the stuff these guys make. They make I quality mean, gear. They do. It's, it's, it's beyond most sim racers. This is not toy equipment. This is, you know, the stuff you'd see in like heavy duty sims for like commercial use. Yep, I agree. And it is expensive like we mentioned. And if you're here in the States, it's gonna cost you even more to get it shipped here. But it goes back to the, you know, you get what you pay for. And if it's something that you really want for your particular setup, whether it's the shifter or the handbrake or both, they're, it's high quality gear and yeah, it's expensive. Speaking of which, if you're interested in checking them out, you can go to f1driving.it. 
That's Team ARC's website, or ARC Team's website. Um, but I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the other thing I wanna mention real quick, sorry, you're gonna take this out, but I look at our form and all of the DIY rigs that have really gone to a new level this year, and guys are building cockpits like I didn't see three years ago. Yeah. And when you're talking about that, all of a sudden the price of this shifter or handbrake, when you're talking about rounding out one of those type of rigs, it's like, this is what you've been waiting for to be able to finish your rig, probably. Well, it just goes to your hobby. You know, we we moved up here to Spokane, and, and we've been doing a lot of outdoor hobbies now. Kayaking and mountain biking, and we each have like a thousand bucks into kayaking. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's because it's something that we love now, and that we're going out and doing a lot of. And, you know, it's kind of suck, is we're not going to be able to do it during the winter. But you know what? You get what you pay for. I mean, yeah. what you put into it, hopefully you're going to get out of it. And same thing here. You know, hopefully you will, if this is something that you buy, you will get out of what you put into it. I agree. You know, and I'm, I'm almost now dividing out how many trips we've gone in our kayaks, and now it's like, okay, each trip's been $100, now each trip's been $50. So, <laughs> you know, you get what you pay for, and if yep. this is some a hobby that you love, you know, invest in it. Yeah. Because you're going to get what you pay for out of it. Absolutely. So, now that's going to wrap things up. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. Hopefully you've enjoyed our review here. Make sure to visit us at our website, isrtv.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Visit us at our forums. And that's going to do it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review of the Carbon Shifter and Race Break by ARC Team. We'll see you guys next time. GT Chassis Racing Rigs provided by Human Racing. Go to humanracing.co.th.